hey guys this is Casey from Casey designs so today I'm going to be showing you how to create a logo in Adobe Illustrator so let me show you guys what to we'll be creating today so this is the logo we're going to be creating today in Adobe Illustrator so let's go to Illustrator and then begin creating this interesting logo so I go to Illustrator click on new and then and then I'm going to be using a document with a width of 2000 by 2000 pixels so I already have that inputted here then the rest I'm going to I'm going to leave at default and just click on create okay so the first thing I'm going to do is to um, go all the way to the logo and then kind of drag that logo into Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to fix this here. So I'm just going to tear this off. Okay, that's fine. And then just pull this out like so, so I can see the names. That's fine. Okay. So I'm going to start by um, dragging my image into uh, Illustrator. Okay. Good. So now the next thing I'm going to do is to kind of zoom zoom out. So I'll just hold Control and minus key on the keyboard to kind of zoom out. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the edge of this, holding Shift and Alt. And kind of resize this like so. Click on the space bar to pan. Put this just here. And then Ctrl 0 to zoom in again. Okay. Click on the space bar to pan. And kind of fix this here. So I'm going to start by creating the text. So the font I use for this is called Quicksand. So um, I'll just go to my type 2. And then begin typing okay, it's loading up so I'm on my type 2 then I'm just going to click and then begin typing so I'm going to click here okay then I'm going to increase the font size to around 72 but I'm still going to increase it more. So go back to my move to my, my selection to rather then holding shift and notes. I, I can increase this. That's fine. So I'm just going to double click on the text. Then control A to, to select all. Then type in A for this. Then select the A, go to my font, and just type in quicksand. Quicksand. I'm going to be using quicksand for this. Q U I. Okay. Now I'm going to be using the quicksand bold. Click on that. Go back to my selection tool. Selection two, then kind of fix this here. Oh, shift and notes to kind of increase this, make it bigger than it is. Okay, that's fine. Then the next thing I'm going to do is to make a duplicate of this. I'm going to hold my Alt key, then my Shift key to snap it to one axis. Says constrained. I kind of move this here like so. Then I'm going to double click on it and change this to B. Perfect. That's cool. Go back to my selection tool. Kind of fix this here. Then select, select the both of them. I want to make a backup for this. So holding Alt, I'm just going to drag this up here like so. So I can have a backup in case anything goes wrong. 
So it's always good to have backup so you can always have something to go back to again and just continue making modifications on it. So um so the next thing I'm going to do is to um is to um kind of now now okay let me explain something airboss g is that's the name of the logo so as you can see from the logo down here you can see the g inside this b so that so that's the concept of this um logo so i want to try and recreate the same thing so if i do that i need to convert this my hold on shift i need to convert this my b text to an object so so it, it don't have the text properties anymore so to, to do that, I need to go to my object, click on expand, click OK, that's fine. So now it has lost all its type properties, so it's just a normal regular shape now. So I'll do the same thing for the A, OK, object, expand, object and fill, turn down, click OK, perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is to... Um, draw out something like this something like this okay and then I'm going to go to my um, the properties of this shape transform then as you can see down here <coughs> as you can see down here as you can see down here I can control let me turn this turn this on so that any figure I type in here will reflect on the other values also. So let me type in um, let me type in uh, 100. So now I have a rounded shape. That's fine. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this shape. So I go to my selection tool again, then holding Alt, and I can drag this out here like so. That's fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is to use this shape here to divide or cut out or make a trim or crop out this hole here. So that's exactly what I want to do now. So maybe I'm just going to resize this, resize this like so. Okay. Kind of fix this here. And then I'm going to click on my B shape then next click on the, 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 the newly created shape go to my pathfinder now if you can't find this pathfinder just go all the way to windows and then scroll down to pathfinder and then just turn that on so mine is already here so the next thing i'm going to do is click on minus to select an object so let me select that okay so now it's working that's fine that's perfect so now I have this so the next thing I'm going to do is to um, select this shape kind of reduce the size holding shift and alt something like that should work and then just fix this down here maybe I still need to reduce the size a bit more like so then now I'm going to change the color of this I'm going to change the color of this. So I'm going to select the select the shape. The name does is a color that, that is obvious to see. Then right click on it. Then go to arrange. Then use send to back. So send to back will send it completely to the back. So send back will only send it to, the, it to the back one step. But send back will send it to the back. Even though you have like 10 different shapes in front of it. Or it's in front of 10 different shapes. Once you click on send to back, it's sent, it sent back all the way to the last shape. So send back, that's fine. So I'll see, I'm still going to change the color to something similar to what I have here. But for now, that's fine, just to identify it. So the next thing I'm going to do is to um, go to my direct selection tool. Then kind of select this top part. And kind of hold it on shift and move it up just, just a bit. Now that's fine. So the next thing I want to do is to create this arc up here. That's the next thing I want to create. So to do that, to do that, all I have to do is to um, bring in my rulers. First of all, let me kind of position this close to this. Then bring in my rulers, 
clicking on your control and R key on your keyboard for rulers or you go to view then turn on show rulers but now I already have mine turned on so that's the reason why I should hide rulers so I'm going to leave that as it is and then I'm going to drag come here and drag a guide right about yeah something that kind of sits on top of my A so I'm going to get a closer view on this and kind of move the guides downwards move my guides that's not moving so let me just delete that let me move that guide and draw a new one view rulers go to my view guides then clear guides so now I can click and redraw a new one that sits on top of my A, that's fine. So I'm going to zoom out again, control minus to zoom out. Okay, holding my space bar to kind of move this like so. And that's fine. So let me start creating this arc shape on top on top of this place here. So to do that, I go to my shape tool and click on my ellipse and kind of draw something holding shift and alt. Kind of draw something like this okay then i'm going to cancel the remove the fill so come here to the fill and click on none for the fill then for the stroke i'm going to be using a black color then let me increase the stroke to around um, uh, um maybe uh 60 should work 60 is fine I kind of position this so it sits on my guide. Okay. So I want to make it sit on my guide. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I think I need to reduce, reduce, reduce this, this stroke a bit more. Let me give it around 50. Okay, that's fine. So next thing i'm going to be doing is to make a duplicate of this so i'm going to hold down alt make a duplicate of this or no, rather control c control f so the f will paste it in front then now then now i can resize this I can resize this shape so i have one inner now okay okay so no maybe i'll just put this maybe i'll just put this down here for now and just work with just the first one okay so the next thing i'm going to do is to um kind of um let's see let me go all the way to my um rectangle too and kind of draw a rectangle around here then I'm going to switch it from fill from stroke to fill and I want to make it kind of uh, something like this should work yeah something like this should work using my arrows to kind of move it then move it up holding my shift key so it's constrained that's fine then i want to round this con the corners again so I, I can do that by going to my dress selection tool then just click and drag on that white dot so you can see this if you're using a newer version of um, illustrator so that's fine i feel i should make i feel i should make this my ellipse smaller okay yeah that's fine then kind of drop it down holding the shift key then using my arrow keys to move this down 
so that's fine so now i need to convert my um need to convert need to convert my um my now you know it's a stroke i need to convert this stroke into an object so i'm going to go back to objects expand and click ok so now it has lost the stroke properties now it's having just a few as you can see from here then i'm going to select this two shape and this b shape also go to my pathfinder and click on divide so once i do that i need to go back to the shape both selected and then on group and then i can add, add them now separate pieces so i can delete what i don't need anymore delete this delete this delete this also delete this also okay now that's just fine so i think this is just to i so maybe i just drag this down a bit like so okay so the next thing i'm going to do is to select this bold the bold shape then control c control control c okay i click on the f key now control c control f then at now i can resize this okay let me undo that select this select this the two go to unite so it becomes one shape and then i can control c control f now and kind of resize this make this smaller like so then arrange send to back arrange send to back okay that's fine so I have this all set up now. So the only thing that's remaining just to give it the colors. So since, so since I already have the image here, so let me show you guys how to apply gradients on your logo. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go up here. Let me delete this. I don't, I don't need this anymore. Delete this. Now I feel like I should give this some more thickness. So I'll go to my um, stroke. Add a black stroke again. Then kind of increase the stroke, maybe it's around, yeah, that's fine, 7, 7 is fine. Then use my arrow key to kind of move this close to the center. Then now I need to expand this again, go to objects, expand, okay, that's fine. Click on unite, okay, that's fine. So to add my gradients, I'm going to go up here draw one square like so then go to my selection to hold and out duplicate this to the other side then do make another copy of it again so now i have three copies now so i'm going to for this yeah i'm going to select select my first color go to my eyedropper tool and then pick this color here go back to my selection to select the next shape click on my eyedropper tool and pick the next color then go back to my move move to click on this first shape here double click on this fill i want to copy the x code copy this code copy click ok now click on this third shape then i need to apply a gradient to this because this um, my logo here has a gradient fill so click on the click on this shape then click on the gradient down here gradients then I can apply a gradient to this. So double click on this first one. Then come here and change this to RGB. Now to give me the X code. Select this and then paste in my newly copied X code. Click enter on your keyboard. Done. Go to the next shape. Double click on this. Copy this X code. Copy. Click OK. Go back to this shape. Double click down here. Go back to RGB up here and then paste, paste your code. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to be using this now on my on my logo. So first of all, let me click on this and then kind of move this closer a bit. And then 
start applying the color so select i'll select this a go to my eyedropper tool then click on this rectangle so it will automatically apply that gradient to it that's cool click on this shape click on my eyedropper tool select this then i need to i need to reverse this so go to my gradients gradients then click on this reverse gradients perfect that's fine click on this shape inwards here go to my dropper tool and then pick uh, this shade here then now let's click here and drag this out so I have more of a darker one protruding that's fine and the next thing I'm going to do is to go up here I'm sure you guys already get the idea pick uh, click on this color pick this Click on this also. I drop a two. Maybe I pick this. And likewise here also. Maybe I pick this instead. Okay, that's fine. So now I have my logo all set up. That's really really cool. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to type in the down the text down here. That's very easy. I use the same quick sound fonts. So all I have to do is to go to um, my type two again, turn on my caps lock, and then just now I can type a boss a boss gist. Okay, then maybe I'll remove the bold. Maybe I make it regular okay don't worry nothing went wrong it's still loading okay and that's just too thin i'm not going to i'm just going to stick with the bold stick with the bold the next thing i'm going to do is just resize this holding shift and notes to resize this position this way it should be cool okay that's fine so i have my logo all set up so the next thing i'm going to do is to make a mock-up for this in photoshop so that's quite easy so so what i'm going to do is to show you guys a, a, a little trick so um i'm going to um let me just take this up holding shift i'm dragging it up okay then i don't want it to be full black let me use a gray stone like so that's fine so Going back to Photoshop, Photoshop to make a mock-up for, for that logo, so select File, New, File, New, so yeah, I'm going to be using the 2000 by 2000 document also, 2000 by 2000, Pixels, please don't forget Pixels, change this to Pixels, Pixel, then 2000 by 2000 take down the resolution to around 100 click create then unlock my background and then uh, give this a gradient overlay gradient overlay So um change, changing this up to uh white to black changing this black to somewhere around gray click OK click OK change the style to radar that's fine kind of pull this around here click OK and then the next thing I'm going to do is to um, go up here. Then I want to make a screenshot of my entire visible layer. So holding Alt Shift, um, I holding the Alt Shift, Control and E. So that's fine. So I'll go back to Illustrator. Then kind of select this logo drag this 
to Photoshop. I kind of drop this here. Then, then click enter. Okay. That's fine. So control that I'll go back to Illustrator. Then copy this. Drag this also to Photoshop and drop this here. Click enter to apply that. Okay. And kind of position this here. Then select the both of them. Then control T to go to my transform tool and kind of rescale this like so. Center this on my page. Apply this. Then now I'm going to be adding a drop shadow to the bigger one. So FX drop shadow. Reset to default. And then kind of increase the visibility of this distance increase the size also okay take this down a bit more and that's fine click ok then i want to add um, a vignette to the backstage so go to filter go to lens correction now i'm selecting this layer that i made a screenshot of so yeah, then I go to um, custom. Then I kind of decrease the value for the vignettes. Now this is fine. Okay. Then click OK on that. Applying. So now I have my finished logo looking cool and great. So thank you guys for watching. Please do make sure you do like and comments and then subscribe i really appreciate that so thanks thank you guys for watching and then i'll see you in the next lesson